All right, welcome to our latest Swamp Cast. Since we were last with you, Kevin Brockway and I, uh, Florida uh, has won two games in about as a, impossibly opposite fashions as you could possibly do it. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, I think the one thing was consistent was obviously defensively, mm -hmm. Florida played pretty well both games, uh, you know, holding Auburn to 40 and holding Arkansas to 43. I mean, the only difference was certainly offensively a very ugly game for Florida against Auburn, whereas uh, a little bit better ball, ball movement and establishing mm -hmm. a little bit inside more against Arkansas. Yeah, you know, it was kind of funny because uh, I, I, certainly Florida, you could say Florida held Arkansas to 43 and held Auburn to 40, but Auburn and Arkansas had a lot to do with that too. <laughs> now, I'm not... The, you know, saying that their defensive effort wasn't great, and they did. And Kenny Boynton, the job he did on Rodney Clark was amazing. But man, those are bad teams. And uh, I was really surprised how bad Arkansas was. That, you know, we were having the debate as to whether uh, Florida or Auburn Thursday or Arkansas Saturday, what was the worst performance of the year in the SEC? But then we remembered Auburn scored six at LSU. Yeah, that's and true. And a half. So, I mean, it's just, it, it's the, the bigger mystery is Florida. You know, they go to Auburn and play about as bad as you can play. And then they come back and look as good as they've looked all year. Yeah, and you know you can evoke the uh, you know Forrest Gump line. It's kind of like uh, box of chocolates. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to get each night. Um, no, and certainly no idea. they're going to have to have uh, a certain level of consistency coming up in this stretch because you've got uh, six games coming up, five against division opponents. Uh, you know this is going to be a huge stretch where you're going to need that intensity right. every night just in order to survive it, in order to get through three and three, four and two to put yourself in a good position. Otherwise. You know, you could be looking at a, a, a very ugly stretch because, uh, you know, you got Georgia tomorrow, which has uh, great talent, and then, you know, Mississippi State on Saturday, which I think has the most talent in the West, just haven't really put it all together and materialized yet. No, in fact, they went to Athens and got destroyed on Saturday. It was not, wasn't even a game. I think they got a rebound on something like 48 23. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a weird team. Uh, but let's talk about the Bulldogs. That's a good team. And, uh, you know, maybe the third, you could argue, second best team. Uh, in the SEC, I, I, you know, right now the way Alabama's playing, they may be the second or third, despite a terrible pre-conference um, record. But Georgia, you know, they've got all the elements. They got big guys. They've got guards that can shoot, and uh, they're pretty tough at home. Yeah, and you know, Gerald Robinson obviously gives them a different mm -hmm. element to point guard with his uh, with his quickness. That's allowed Dustin Ware to slide over the two guard, where he's more comfortable as a shooter. Um, Trey Tompkins, preseason player of the year, is an inside out threat, and Travis Leslie. Uh, their small forward might be the best pure athlete in the SEC in terms of his ability to run and jump and do right. things. So um, it's a team that uh, certainly is very gifted offensively. Defensively, you know, they had some struggles in Mark Fox's first season. They're getting better there, but they still have some holes defensively that, that I think, you know, Florida's mm -hmm. capable of exploiting, uh, you know, if they come out with the right mindset. If the Tennessee or the Tennessee or Arkansas Gators show up, but if the Auburn or South Carolina Gators show up, they could get blown off the floor. So. Well, we'll see how they do, and we'll come back for our next Swampcast. We'll talk about that game, Kevin, and then also preview uh, Florida's game against Mississippi State. It's Bulldog Week in Gainesville. they got back-to-back yeah. -back Bulldogs coming up in, uh, in this week. I think it's a big week. I think if they go one and one I think they're okay. You know? Yeah. If you they can't can, go one with two. Yeah, you know, back-to-back -back games on the road, that kind of wears. And this is actually this, uh, you know, Georgia game is the end of about, uh, what, three games in, in five or six days, right. that stretch there. So it'll be interesting to see how Billy uses his bench. I right. thought Casey Prather uh, played very yeah, well on Saturday, and that's the key if you can kind of get him going a little bit with Patrick Young, uh, Wilbekin, and uh, Eric Murphy. To me, still doesn't look like he's quite 100% there yet. Billy said in the press conference he thinks he's 100% physically, but not mentally, maybe a step behind, a step slow. But I think you've got to get contributions from the bench as well because this is the end of a, a pretty pretty rough stretch yeah, of games. Is. you know. So. And again, you know, the NCAA and the SEC, all they care about is a student athlete. Oh, wait, <laughs> except that we want Tuesday, Thursday games for ESPN. Yep. Now, look, don't ever forget who's running college athletics. It's ESPN, not, not the NCAA. All right, that's going to do it. We'll come back and we'll talk about the Georgia game and also preview Mississippi State when we have, when we have our next Swampcast. Until then, Pat Dooley and Kevin Brockway, the Gainesville Sun, saying so long from the Sunshine State. Okay.